from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. For everyone out there that disagrees, change the channel. You're not worth it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are. Together again on the radio. Appreciate you doing business with us. We were uh, taking a peek at the baseball all-star game, which uh, is on television tonight. And it is coming from Yankee Stadium in New York City, which is being torn down after this year. And uh, once again, New York finds a way to... uh, to try to make itself appear more important than everybody else. Many other important ballparks over the years have been torn down. But, uh, of course, uh, they're going to uh, make it seem like this is bigger and more important because it's in New York City. The New York Yankees not having won a World Series since the year 2000, which is, for the record, eight years ago. And about, uh, oh, $2 billion in salary ago, the Yankees have spent, and they uh, still cannot uh, win the World Series. They've even only gotten to the World Series once since then. But yet, uh, between ESPN and Fox and all the morons on the East Coast, they are trying to make it appear that this is uh, somehow some big deal to people who don't live in New York. Now, I understand if you live in New York and you're a fan of the New York Yankees, uh, that this would be important to you. But is this really important to the rest of us? And the answer is no. It's not important to the rest of us. Uh, You know, uh, we don't live in New York City. I say we, meaning the vast majority of people uh, who are listening to this program. There may be a a handful, a smattering of people in the New York area listening on our online stream. That's possible, maybe even likely. But the vast majority of people listening uh, are not from New York. And, uh, again, we just don't care, okay? We don't care. This is not a big deal. And just like when ESPN tries to shower us with all these references to the Yankees and the Red Sox are playing again. The, the most important rivalry in sports, the Red Sox and the Yankees, it's so important. It's the most important. It's like, to who? To people who live near I-95? I mean, who is it important to? It's just plain silly. Los Angeles, by the way, let's just take Boston for a second. Los Angeles is three times the size of Boston. Both as a city and a metropolitan area. Boston certainly isn't important. And uh, New York City, well, it's, you know, I guess in its mind, it's as important as it thinks it is. But uh, in the real world, New York is, uh, you know, just another city. Just another city in the United States. Yes, it's bigger. Yes, it has more people living in it. But that doesn't necessarily make it better. It's a city where one out of four people has genital herpes. Right? I mean, you guys got no culture out there. I didn't know they were talking about the culture you look at under a microscope. One out of four New Yorkers has genital herpes. <laughs> so uh, I guess the Yankees have lesions of fans, you might say. Thank you. <laughs> what do you got to do? But this whole, that was the rim shot right there. He played it. Oh, boy. Gary needs to put the cans on once in a while. 
He just played the rim shot, Gary. <laughs> Unbelievable. But, um, you know, I, again, because they're tearing down Yankee Stadium, here's another opportunity for the people in the... By the way, they take every opportunity they can to try to tell us how they are more important than the rest of us. You know, and uh, enough time has passed to say this, but whether it be 9-11, uh, when, of course, there were other plane crashes uh, and other people injured in places like the Pentagon or in the uh, suburban areas in Pennsylvania... You'll notice we never hear about those places anymore. All we ever hear about is the World Trade Center. And the Yorkers will lord it over us how they survived 9-11 and they were superior to the rest of us. It can be that. It can be sports. You know, the fact that the New York Yankees have won a certain number of championships, never mind the fact that over the years the Yankees have spent more money than any other team in uh, American sports history, uh, paying people to play for them. You would expect they would win the most number of championships because they've spent the most money. It doesn't make New York any better than anybody else. So they, there's always new excuses for why New York is more important than the rest of us. They just have to get those in on primetime TV anytime they can. New York, very, very, very important. Very important. Howard Rosenberg, the former uh, TV critic of the Los Angeles Times, wrote a uh, wrote a piece for the Times the other day. And I read it on the Internet. I did not buy the Times like most people these days. Uh, I read it on the Internet, and I paid nothing to see it. Um, Howard Rosenberg wrote a piece the other day talking about the death of Tim Russert, which we had referenced on the air, and um, how there were all these big news stories going on, but... NBC, MSNBC, and everybody on the East Coast uh, had to uh, turn their whole programming day into the death of Tim Russert, when in reality, Tim Russert, who was a true news guy himself, probably would have thought that was bad news judgment. But it was typical of, like, you know, this guy's in Washington, D.C., sometimes he's in New York, it's the East Coast, this guy's very, very important, very important. But... Um, <laughs> You know, I, I just yeah, if you live in the rest of the United States, you just get tired of this stuff after a while. And I believe me, I I empathize with our friends in Dallas and our friends in uh, uh, Portland and our friends uh, in Seattle, and I empathize, of course, with our friends here in Southern California. We're just fed up, fed up, fed up with hearing about New York. Fed up with the uh, fact that all of the uh, TV coverage of anything is geared toward... Uh, give me an example. The All-Star Game is on TV right now. Right now. But most people... Well, uh, that is if your station is running our show live. And if it isn't, well, there you go. But uh, the All-Star Game is on TV now, but most people in Southern California can't watch it. Because it has to be on at 8, so Vinny and Guido and uh, the, that bunch there, Shlomo and whatever in New York, so they can get their beauty sleep. They have to watch the All-Star game at 8 o'clock, get to bed by 11. They couldn't possibly split the difference and run the game at 6.30 Pacific time or uh, 7 o'clock Pacific time. They have to make sure that it runs at a convenient time for everybody on the East Coast, and especially in New York. That's that's very very important. Well, the fact that uh, the networks uh, you know do newscasts like CBS and NBC, they do sh newscasts that are live for New York, but in many cases they are not live for the rest of the time zones. They just take a tape of the news from uh, six thirty New York time, and they just replay it. And they can't figure out why people in Los Angeles don't watch the newscast. They'll say things like, "Well, people in LA don't care about the news because they ain't got no culture out there." But in, in reality, uh, people in Los Angeles are smart consumers. And if the newscast is three hours old, they're probably going to find the news somewhere el uh, else other than watching the, the uh, pre-taped, preheated, prefab network newscast that, that came from three hours ago, bottom line. So, uh, you know, as you see, if you do see the All-Star Game at any point or any of the hoopla surrounding the All-Star Game, you're going to see all of this uh, press about New York again and people singing New York, New York, and um, they, you know, the shots of the Empire State Building and what have you. Uh, but come on, it, it, is New York really all that important, is it? Ta -ta -ta. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 
1-800-5800-866. I was just like that one guy that was waiting around for that one girl forever, and then it occurred to me why. There's tons and tons of girls out there. If one doesn't give it up to you, many more will. You know, you just got to find them and make it happen. Right? Why waste the time on one girl? It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 That's our telephone number. Thank you for Tom again. Thank you for being part of the program. We appreciate it. The baseball all-star game being played at Yankee Stadium. People in L.A. can't even watch it. Because it's on when they're all driving home from work. But Vinny and Guido will see it in prime time. And it's another opportunity for everybody to... Uh, Tell us how wonderful they think New York is and how lousy the rest of us are. Christian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing today? Great. I hate being that person, Tom, because I hate all the callers that call in and say, I agree with you 95% of the time, but this is the one time that i got to be that person. And I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, not from New York City, but... People in New York City would say you're not even from New York. Exactly. However, though, what you, well, the part that I think they're, you're way out of left field on is that the Yankees are such a big part of sports history. They have more championships than any team. I mean, there's people all over the country that are fans of the New York Yankees, all over the world. Actually, I mean, actually, uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, have you been all over the world? Uh, yeah, actually, I've been to quite a few places across and, the world. And in which countries did you find support for the New York Yankees? Actually, when I was in Germany, there's there's plenty of them because we have soldiers over there. Oh, I'm talking about uh, people who live in other countries who are citizens of other countries. Well, I don't know about that personally. Well, but I mean, they don't be telling us. They, look, somebody okay. who's in the military is an American who happens to be overseas. There is no support for the New York Yankees in other countries. In England, they run baseball on TV. You know what time it's on? 3 a.m. 3 a.m. I was just there. It's 3 a.m. Right, but there's radio shows that are on at 3 a.m. Obviously, somebody's got to listen to them. Somebody's got to watch them. No, 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 but you say there's support. If there was a lot of support for for the New York Yankees or, in fact, any Major League Baseball team, it would not be on at 3 a.m. They treat baseball in England the way we treat soccer. Right, because it's not a major sport over there, but there's still fans of it, though. I'm not saying everybody... Well, come on. How many fans are there? Tom, they're the largest grossing, one of the largest grossing sports teams in. in and they're sport. not the largest grossing sports team. Manchester United is the largest grossing sports team in the world. Right, I'm talking about American sports, though. Well, you were just about to say they were the largest grossing team in the world. Like New York is always no, prone. You were about to say in the world, and then you corrected yourself. Don't make me play it back. You, you were about to say in the world, and then you corrected yourself. Right, well, I, well, I wasn't trying to say in the world. I meant as far as our major sports. Go and then, the uh, what is that? What? By the way, what does that prove? New York has uh, 17 million people in the metropolitan area. So, so what? Well, well, this know, doesn't mean they're better. It doesn't prove anything. Nobody, it I'm just. And by the way, and by the way, in the in the in the early 90s, when the Yankees weren't winning anything, George Steinbrenner was threatening to move the Yankees out of Yankee Stadium because nobody was coming. So don't talk about how high grossing they are. They're the big New, Actually, New York loves to talk about fans. New York loves to talk about fans in other cities. But the New Yorkers are the biggest fair weather fans in the world. Well, I'm not a Yankees fan, but anyway, but you also said too that nobody made any coverage about any of the other planes that crashed. I mean, Tom, they made a movie. No, 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 you're not hearing me. I'm talking about I I said look at the way the story is talked about today. Who talks about anything except the World Trade Center? Because look at the devastation. There was no more, nowhere near as much devastation. See, as look at this. You're competing. You know what? I don't care if it's 3,000 people or 30 people or 150 people. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's all tragedy. And, and you, here you are. You, you, well, you know, New York had even more devastation, so therefore it's even more important. You know, I mean, come on. That's where you're going to get more. This sounds preposterous. It's uh, to people who, the people who did not grow up in New York, this sounds ridiculous. And it's the reason, as I always say, it's the reason America hates New York and New Yorkers because of this attitude. What attitude? <laughs> the, the, the one. But here you are talking about who had more devastation, therefore who deserves the most attention. What I'm saying is that's where the media is going to go to is where there's more devastation. I mean, yeah, no one's saying. No, that. no, that's not. You know what? That the only reason it gets more attention is because ABC News, NBC News, CBS News—they're all based in New York. 
They still have, they still have offices everywhere, though. So I mean, but no, no, they're, they're based. The the executives, the people who make the decisions, are based in New York. Regardless, though, I mean, no one. That's why. Nobody said there was any less tragedy, but I still have to believe that when it comes to the sports end of things, though, as far as... Do you know how much devastation we have in L.A. when we've had earthquakes in the past, for example? Do you know how much devastation we had here? you know how much coverage it got? Nothing compared to some of the things that happened in New York. Back home. When I was I'm York, talking about... No, you didn't. You didn't. Okay. I Because you want to know something? I was living in Boston during the uh, Northridge earthquake. I was just about to come back to L.A. after a 10-month stay in Boston. And uh, I, I did not see the coverage that you think you saw. Okay. Even the fires back home last year, the fires that were in the Southern California, I mean, San Diego area, those made tons of coverage back home about it. Well, again, even the fires that are going if, it happened, California, if it happened in New York, they would, they would stop programming. They wouldn't just show it on the news. They would preempt programming for that. Well, I still think you're way off the Like they preempted programming to show Tim Russert dying. And he's a major face in the media. I mean, yeah, come on, there's plenty of major faces in the media. That one happened to be in the Northeast Quadrant, so he was far more important than the other faces. No, not at all. But when it comes to the, when it comes to the Northeast, he's more important in the Northeast. Uh, again, but if it's important in the Northeast, show it in the Northeast. You yeah. see, it's the same old thing. By the way, even that show we see on tape most of the time. But people still watch it, though. Not so obviously, they want to know what's going on again. You know, I, I I will go back. I will go back to the 2000 World Series where the Yankees played the Mets. Right, the last one they went to. And I heard the the average yachts in New York, and I heard it more than once saying, "This is what the whole country's been waiting for." That you know, the Subway Series, the whole country's been waiting for this. And do you know what the ratings were for the 2000 World Series? The lowest in the history of the World Series. Yeah, but there wasn't a, there wasn't an empty seat in the stadium though. That, I'm not talking about the stadium. I'm saying outside of New York, nobody cares. Oh, I I, I got a big difference of opinion when it comes. To well, the then why were the? Like I said, I'm not a Yankee fan either, though. But I mean, if you look at what they've done, I mean, they've done a hell of a lot. Again, more if you done. spend two hundred plus million dollars a year on salary, you better win the most championships. You know, winning the most championships in baseball proves nothing. There's no salary cap. There's nothing stopping people from buying up every player in the league, and that's what the Yankees do. NBA has a salary cap, NFL has a salary cap, NHL has a salary cap. Uh, the profit sharing is the profit sharing is minimal, as you know. Right. It's a joke. The fact is, the big teams can spot can spend all the money and buy all the players they want. The fact well, if is, you look at baseball now though, it hasn't done anything for the Yankees over the past six years. The fact they can buy everything. That, that, well, just perfect. because they are badly managed doesn't mean that they haven't spent the most money of anybody, and well, they've spent over a billion dollars this this century. Tom, plus the Dodgers wouldn't even have a baseball team if it wasn't for New York. What do you mean? L.A. wouldn't have a baseball team if it wasn't for New York. Why do you say that? Because they came from Brooklyn. What does that prove? That means that they left Brooklyn because because they left Brooklyn because it was a toilet bowl. They left they, they, the, the Dodgers left Brooklyn because it was a filthy, depressing toilet bowl, and they played in a tenement, a, a ghetto tenement of a, of a stadium. Right, so, but what I'm saying is, you got the Dodge, the Giants wouldn't have even come out to San Francisco had it not been New York had nothing. So uh, you're giving New York credit for driving these teams away, and they, somehow they deserve credit for that. New York gave us these teams. New York didn't give us these teams. New York, New York bungled it with these teams, and they were forced to leave. But still, we still have right. Well, no, I'm not going to disagree with that. But yeah, well, so in other words, the, the the bureaucratic bungling of the city of New York resulted in L.A. getting a team and San Francisco getting a team, and you're turning it around and trying to make it sound like it was some some good thing they did. I don't know. It's it's just going to be. A, I mean, it's your opinion of New Yorkers. I mean, it's not just my opinion of New Yorkers. It's the opinion of most of the people who don't live in New York. I don't know. There's a lot of positives about New York that... Well, well, uh, but, uh, but, but again, uh, people in New York love to not... You know what? If you're in New York and you like living in New York, fine, enjoy it. But shut up about it and stop telling us how New York is superior to wherever we are. 
Well, nobody's saying it's superior. I'm just saying when you... New Yorkers do it all the time. What do you mean they don't do it? Of course they do it. Hang on a second. Robert, what did you want to say to Christian here? Hey, Christian, man. Uh, well, first off, you said that, you know, wherever there's devastation, there's going to be media. What about Myanmar? You know, there was, you know, there was a big, you know, cyclone that wiped out and killed over 100,000 people. Where's the media there? You know, there was a whole military government just, like, not letting any aid to that country for however long. People, bodies in the river, dude, they're drinking water. Which, you know, 2,600 people, if I feel bad for New York, yeah, of course, but it's not, it's not a complete devastation to our world economy and all this other stuff. And as far as the, the Yankees... Half of your world economy runs out of those two buildings. <laughs> the UN okay. had offices in those two buildings. How's okay, you're gonna you're gonna chew me up on that. Okay, fine. But look, listen to this. Listen to this. What about when the, the Brooklyn Dodgers came over to LA and it made a record crowd that still cannot be broken today in the Coliseum? What's up with that? By the way, I might add Actually, that the that the, that the Dodgers' first game, the Dodgers' first game. Wait a minute, the Dodgers' first game. The Dodgers' first game in Los Angeles in 1958 drew more fans than the Dodgers' last 10 games in Brooklyn. Put together. Exactly. Because Brooklyn's a hole, it's a toilet bowl, and the Dodgers were forced to leave. And you know what? Yeah, everywhere I travel, everywhere I travel, everyone says the same thing about New York and how how much of a... I can't even Where say that travel to? There. Where have you traveled to other than in California? I traveled to New York, Miami, Chicago, uh, Northwest. Well, traveled to New York, they didn't say how much they hate the state. So People say it all the time. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll just keep moving around here and see what people have to say. Sam, what did you well, want to say to Christian here? To hey, this guy's an idiot. How's he going to give credit to New York for, for the Dodgers being in L.A.? Even if they didn't come to L.A., another team would have just came up over here, you know? So what does New York have to do with the Dodgers' success in L.A.? What team would they have had? What was that? There would have been expansion. You know, when the Dodgers or the Giants yeah, left New York, there was expansion. Huh? Eventually, at some point in time. But you're also saying, too, that just because they spend, I mean, even the, like the Yankees spend millions of dollars, they're still playing teams that are low-income teams right now that wouldn't be the Yankees. Look at the Tampa Bay Double Rays. I what mean, about them? They're well ahead of the Yankees, and they're a low-market team. Well, that, that, yeah, that's now you're making our point for us. You're, you're pointing out how badly managed the Yankees are. They spend Now they're spending over $200 million. They can't even win. I know. Well, first of all, I never said I supported the Yankees, but I'm just making a point of that. Well, don't use the Yankees as an example. I mean, you know, yeah, let's talk about the Yankees. They they spend over two hundred million dollars a year on salary, and and they're in but third place. Even the history of any major sport. I mean, in the U.S. But that that doesn't mean anything. They're the most relevant. They have been the most relevant. Most of the championships they won, black people weren't even allowed to play. That wasn't because the Yankees' fault. That was That's a, it's still a fact. It's still a fact. If Josh Gibson could play against the Yankees, would they have done so well? No one knows. Yeah, and we'll never but know. That's not the Yankees' fault. It's not New York. I didn't fault. say it's their fault, but but don't go out. They won the most championships. Well, so what? Back when they won most of their championships, there were only seven other teams in the American League. Back when they won most of their championships, there were no black people in baseball. Okay, let's talk about from the nineties on. They still won the most championships in the past decade compared to any other team. No, actually, that's no, actually you're wrong about that. Since 1990, you said in the last decade. The last decade would be 1999 through 2008, or 1998 okay. through 2007. Not true. Let me, correct, let me correct myself then. From 1990 to net to the present. Well, you know, we can keep slicing and dicing. In radio, we can say, well, we're number one with men between 18 and 23, uh, between uh, 6 a.m. and 2 p.m. I mean, you, you can how thinly can you slice toilet paper? Regardless, they're still the most storied team when it comes to any sport. The most storied team? That's because the stories are written in New York. Anywhere. No. The stories are written in New York. There are plenty of stories about plenty of other teams. And they all get just the same. They all get media coverage. So, I mean, they don't get the media coverage that, that New York does. They don't. Okay, so Kobe Bryant, the only place he's actually relevant is in LA. But yeah, why do they keep talking about it all throughout the whole country then? If he's. If the only place he actually is relevant is in L.A. Same thing with the Lakers. The only place that they're relevant is in L.A. I, I don't disagree with you. 
I don't di- I don't disagree that the uh, Lakers shouldn't be relevant outside of. Uh, but by the way, uh, you you bring up another interesting point by mentioning the NBA. The New York Knickerbockers, who are one of the worst teams in professional sports, get an inordinate amount of coverage. Uh, they sure. should never even be mentioned. The Atlanta Hawks are a better team than the New York Knickerbockers. They should never even be mentioned. The only time the Knicks get covers those for negative stuff. That's happened in the organization. They get mentioned. Yeah, oh, Spike no Lee was at Madison Square Garden. Woody Allen was at Madison Square Garden watching the Knicks. Who cares? They're one of the worst teams there is. That's maybe from like 10 years ago. Though. No, I mean, it's still it's happening. It is still, no, it is still happening. Christy, what did you want to, Christy, what did you want to say to Christian? Yes. Um, hi, Tom. First time caller, long time listener. Cool. Um, first of all, the reason why I called in, I just got off work. You are a humiliation to the human race. I just want to let you know that. You sit here and say that the World Trade Center is the biggest devastation to the world. What about no, what about the that. bombing of Hiroshima? I I'm half, I'm half, I just I'm half, half three Japanese. Between the plane crash and the Pentagon, there was more devastation caused out of those three in New York City. I didn't say it was the biggest devastation you know what? in the world. My heart goes out to the people in New York. But like I said, I'm half Japanese. People are still dying from the radiation that, that the Hiroshima bombing caused. And you're sitting here telling me that that's the biggest devastation in the world. I never said There's that. The, I never said know, it was the biggest devastation in the world. Yes, she did. No, I didn't. I said okay. that out of those three, it was the most major devastation out of those three in America. I never said in the world. You said and the world, the, time. You said the world, time. Coverage. Okay, uh, okay. Well, I'm not going to sit here and debate with you. It's he said, she said. So regardless, right. I know, out of right. those three, it was the most major. That's why I got the most amount of coverage. But they all got great amounts. Just because they, you know what, you know what, okay, fine, okay, fine. fine. Let's let's say let's say you say Amer- you said America, okay? Let's just say you said America. Right. Just because something got the most, you know, media doesn't mean it was the most devastating. Well, yeah, it, it, was was huge, it was it was it was it was a huge so devastation. Out of those three, it was the most devastating. But you know what? But you know what? You can't just say that. Because if you look at people that got hurt in tornadoes and stuff, it, they weren't in New York, and it was very no, devastating. Uh, uh, very well, you're, you're missing the point. What I said was, out of those three things, it was the most devastating. So if you look at those three, there were more lives lost in New York City than there were in Washington or in Philadelphia when the plane crashed. However, he's saying that there's there wasn't as much coverage about the other two. But there was, because they even made a movie about the, the one that happened in Philadelphia. That's not news crash. coverage. That's a movie. Yeah. Well, that's, that's still making Thank national you, coverage. That's still making national coverage. And they and I was in the military at that point. They still had just as much coverage in New York as about the other two as they did about everything that's going on in the World Trade Center. They had pretty much equal amount of coverage the whole thing. The day that it happened. I don't. Th- well, you would not now, and not in retrospect. At this point, you never, you never, you never in the news. All you hear about is the World Trade Center and the rebuilding of the World Trade Center. You don't hear about the other incidents of nine eleven. You don't. That's the way it is. Got to run. More of your telephone calls are coming up. Tom Likas, one 800 tom one 800 When you're just trying to get laid, being a nice guy in any way, that reputation will kill you. It will kill you. Yeah, dig that, dig that. It's the Tom Likas Show. Hollywood, my home for over 20 years, and I love it. Yes, we were talking about the baseball all-star game. It's on TV. Nobody in LA can watch it. Most people are coming home from work. They can't even see the goddamn game. God forbid they should show the game at a time when we can all watch it. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's just another opportunity for them to hem and haw about New York and how wonderful they think New York is, and how lousy the rest of us are. Jesus, tired of it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Jesse on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? Doing okay, Jesse. All right, just got a few things to say about New York. I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. About two years ago, I was in New York. That city, you can't even walk through it. It's so crowded. There's no, you know, you can't even drive around it or anything like that. I don't know why people from New York actually think 
or brag about they're from New York. Los Angeles is a way better city than them. I don't care about the All-Star game. I'm on my way home. I just got off of work. And by the time I get, it, get home, it's going to be, what, seventh inning? So, you know what, New York and all the New Yorkers over there, they really uh, just don't really like New York any or any of their sports, sport teams, actually. I just don't know why people from New York or anybody being a fan of New York can say they like New York. I don't see anything that that city does good for us. Well, you know, I, the arrogance uh, of, of New Yorkers in New York City it can be seen in one particular ad campaign I saw for Bank of America. You know, we've had Bank of America in California forever. Yeah, but yeah. but they've only been in New York a short time, and they bought up a bunch of local banks, and now there's all these banks called Bank of America in New York. And you may know uh, from uh, being around L.A., uh, the, the ads for Bank of America say the slogan, Higher standards, right? Higher standards. The bank has higher standards. In New York, they have the very same ad, except here's what it says. Bank of America, higher standards, and then in parentheses, in parentheses it says, even by New York standards. Like, I, are, are you kidding me? Yes. Yeah, like, uh, what, you think we've got lower standards than New York? Are you kidding me? I think Los Angeles has higher standards than New York. This is just a bunch of arrogant people over there. They're rude. Like I said, I was there a couple years ago. You can't get nothing out of them. They're just walking around with their noses up in the air like they're better than everybody across this country. There's other more beautiful cities in this country that you could go see than go to a city when it's hot and muggy, all it does is smell like sewers. That's right. And in Los Angeles or California, Southern California, you could go to a beach. Not only one beach, you could go to three, four beaches, and you won't get that smell. That you know, is right. Yeah, it's too hot over there in the summer. It gets hot over here. But we got places where we could go and relax. In New York, you can't because it's so crowded. Yeah. I, you know, again, if New Yorkers like it, that's great. They should stay there and enjoy it. Yeah, but, but don't be coming to cities like Dallas and uh, Los Angeles and uh, Portland and other places and be telling everybody, oh, yeah, well, this place uh, this place stinks. The restaurants stink. Nothing's like New York. Can't get a good bag. You can't get a good pizza. Well, Shut place. up. Exactly. They should just stay in New York, don't come to other cities, and don't try to rub everything off of, this is New York, this is how we do it. Well, you hear the people who call this show, it takes nine seconds before they go, I'm from New York. Well, I take time, I'm from New York. York. Shut up, shut up, who shut up, shut up. <laughs> all right, Tom, that's all I had to say. Hey, can you take me out, Kobe Bryant style? Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Uh, yeah, the air I breathe. Uh, She's so special to me. Uh, uh, it's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Jackie on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hi, um, Tom. If you're from New York, why do you hate it so much? Well, <laughs> first of all, I left New York. That should tell you something about how I feel about New York. Mm -hmm. I lived there and I left. How bad was it? Well, uh, it, it, New York is fine for a weekend. You know, it's fine for an occasional visit if you want to, to you know, see a show or something. So. But living there is hell. It's hell. Hmm. My neighbor said it used to be really nice when she was, like, 20. Right now she's 80. And now it's horrible and ugly and stuff. Yeah. Is there a lot of rats? Yes. Isn't it, like, dirty and crap? And that's just on the city council. Ew. Wait, how, when, how old were you when you, were, when you started your show? How old was I when I started doing my show? Yeah. Well, my first radio show was when I was 14, but I've been doing this show for about 14 years. Yeah. Um. You won't believe what my stupid brother said. We got into an argument. He's like... Um, you're telling some girl that how oh, you don't believe in karma and all that crap, and how you have like four houses or something. He, and then my brother imitated you, and he's like, "He's so stupid. Why is he showing off?" And then I was like, "Look how stupid you are. You're stoner. You're never gonna go anywhere in life." He's like, "I'm gonna be a celebrity like Miley Cyrus." He's ah. like, "He's stupid to the extreme." Oh. Boy. All right, Jackie, thank you for that. It's Bob. Bob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? 
Great. Great. Tom, why are you guys dissing on New York? It's the greatest city in the world. Oh, don't even. Yeah, You know what? You just say that to get under people's skin. I know. I grew up in New York. No way. I've lived in New York. I've lived in Los Angeles. I've lived all over the world. It's the greatest city in the world. Yeah, the people are a little wacky. The place is a little wacky. But it's a great city. The people are proud of it. That's why they talk it up. Uh, you know what? They should just shut up and uh, stick to their knitting. They can do whatever they want to do. One out of four New Yorkers has genital herpes, which is really something to be proud of. Uh, well, okay. Well, we can all have genital herpes. No, but we, but we don't. Uh, all I know is in New York, one out of four people have it. Uh, I think according to national national statistics, uh, I think it's one out of every five adult male has it. But, it, yeah, but it's one out of every four in New York. There you go. Well, you can't have everything. At least I got that going. That's for great. More herpes yeah. than anyone in America. That's fantastic. <laughs> It's the herpes capital of the world. If you can, I would hate to count the herpes in Los Angeles. If you can okay? make it there, you can make it anywhere with your uh, lesions and shankers. I don't know. And, They're just proud of their city. It's the greatest city in the world. Uh, why do you keep saying that? Because it is. But, but, but who says? The There's no place in the world like yeah, but, Well, that's your yeah, opinion, but guess want. what? Everybody doesn't agree with you. And by the way, Paris is one great city. It is not chopped liver. I did, I've just been in Paris twice within the past year. And Paris, Paris is more beautiful. Paris is more beautiful and has more class than New York could ever dream of. Well, yeah, it's, it's had civilization for another couple thousand years, I would imagine. What? That might be part of it. What? The civilization's been there for a couple thousand years longer. You know what the hell? <laughs> you know how can you? How can I you see. So, wait, by the way, I don't really care what the reason is. If you say New York's the greatest city in the world, and I say that Paris has more class and sophistication and is more beautiful. Well, they had a couple of thousand years head start. Well, it doesn't matter what the reason is. Uh, clearly, you agree with me that Paris is greater than New York, and therefore, New York is not the greatest city in the world. Par Paris is what it is. New York is what it is. Yeah, but but, but Paris is better. Uh, in your opinion, yes. Uh, in the opinion of a lot of people. Well, yeah, I'll well, go there and hang But one thing Paris doesn't... You, by the way, you know one reason Paris is better than New York? Because of one thing it doesn't have. New Yorkers. How many of your listeners have actually been to Paris, Tom? I, it, it doesn't matter. Ten? Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. There you go. All I know is Paris is devoid of New Yorkers. One of the great reasons to love Paris. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's about a million of them here in Los Angeles. Yeah, who all complain constantly. And I say, anybody who doesn't like it here, please go back. Oh, no, I love it here. That's why I'm here. Well, uh, but if New York's the greatest city in the world, why are you slumming with us? Oh, uh, well, you know, I hate being cold, Tom. There, so you're a pussy. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, I'm a pussy. Yeah, I don't there want to be cold go. anymore. There we go. Well, All right, later, Tom. Well, thank you so much. one 800 800 tom It's Henry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. And I got a way to compound it. My family is Jewish, and uh, my little brother out here um, married a West or a uh, New York Jew. And it's like, I swear, you need a six-pack of Heineken, two kamikazes just to be around her. So, oh, it's, it, like you said, everything is it's out here. Everything's out here. So... I don't know. I got to go back there tomorrow for work, and uh, I've tried to fight it every every inch of the way. But uh, it's just the city is pure dysfunction. It's nothing but chaos, and uh, everything's old. It's just it's an absolute mess down there. Yeah, uh, and just getting from the airport to, to Midtown Manhattan is a nightmare in and of itself. Oh, it's ridiculous. And uh, I mean, and, and I don't know any other way to say it without people taking it wrong, but. Uh, you know, a little bit. I think some of it, they wear that 9-11 thing as a crutch, too. Uh, you know, it's sad and it's tragic what happened. My heart goes out to the families. But you know what? It, you know, I don't know. I see Paul McCartney just milking it and milking it and milking it to death. But, you know, and I don't know. I don't know if he's doing it more to try and jumpstart his career again or, or if he's really, you know, that concerned. I don't know. I could be way off base. But it, it, to me, it seems like they wear almost like a badge. Yeah, well, I, I don't disagree with you on that. Carrie on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Yes. How are you? I'm calling. Uh, I'm a visitor to L.A. from Brooklyn, New York. Nine seconds. Okay. I'm on nine seconds. No one's impressed. All right. You're on the air, darling. Hi, Tom. This is Carrie. I'm I thought New Yorkers were New smarter York. than everybody else. Hello. Hi. Yes. So, my name's Carrie. You've I've said that three years. times now. <laughs> well, I've been in Los Angeles for about three minutes. and all Are you I are you here is, uh, to prove how smart you are by repeating your name over and over and not knowing when you're on the air? 
Oh, no, actually, it's my first time calling. So It I'm shows. When someone says you're on the air, do you think that means you're on the air? Yeah, I guess that's what it means. Yes, it does. The Tom Likas Show.